Hey everybody, welcome back to our boosted paper glider experiment. In the previous videos in this series, we attempted to use a water rocket to boost a paper glider to high altitude and release it for a long duration flight. The results were a catastrophic failure, because the paper glider created so much drag that it ripped off the rocket during ascent and ended up in the woods where we found it days later. And the drag from the glider caused the rocket to veer off course and it landed stuck in a tree. In this video, we're going to try and correct the issues we uncovered in the first launch and try again for a successful flight. We took a long and careful look at the previous design to evaluate areas for improvement. One area of concern was replacing the glider retaining system to prevent the glider from creating drag. The original system slung the glider against the rocket fuselage and used the parachute deploy system as the glider release, with a rubber band to propel the glider at apogee. The first issue we addressed was the drag of the glider. Our original version was the typical design that everyone knows how to make. To reduce drag we created a custom design which we could wrap around and conform tightly to the shape of the rocket. The original version relied on the rubber band to propel the paper glider, which isn't compatible with the new glider retaining system. We added a dedicated electronic controller and release servo mechanism to launch the glider. The parachute recovery system was moved to the nose of the rocket to make room for the glider release. The controller which launches the glider is a miniaturized version of our do-it-yourself altimeter project which we show you how to make in our previous video. In this experiment, we used a modified version of the altimeter software to trigger the release of the glider when the upward velocity dropped below 50 feet per second. This gives the glider a firm toss for achieving stable flight instead of launching it with the stretch rubber band. The glider launch software is simply a variant of software which we developed for our air start radial staging system and another secret project, both of which will be covered in upcoming videos. One, one. Revisiting the glider experiment became a good testbed for collecting flight test data and validating the software without risking a complex rocket. With our new design sorted out, we went back to the launch site to see what would happen. The first flight didn't go so well. The onboard camera did show that the glider successfully launched, but the rocket parachute never deployed. Analysis of the rear camera footage shows that the glider was in flight, but we never saw it from the ground. We suspect that the parachute deploy system battery may have become disconnected at launch because the deploy controller audio tones cut off at the moment of launch. We'll never know for sure because everything was torn apart on impact. We rebuilt the deploy system and discarded the damaged section of the rocket so we could test launch it again. The onboard reverse angle video shows a perfect rocket launch, then a perfect glider launch, then a perfect parachute deploy. The forward angle video shows the same thing. But in this view, you can also see the glider is way up in the sky as the rocket descends. From the ground, the launch looked like this.
The glider flew beautifully in spite of the fact that the wings remained slightly curved from being wrapped against the rocket. At one point the glider seems to stall and went into a steep dive only to recover and regain stable flight after losing a lot of altitude. It then touched down gently not far from where the rocket landed. When reviewing the onboard video, we noticed that the rocket actually caught the glider landing on one of the onboard cameras. Being excited about the successful flight, we reset and reloaded and prepared for another flight before the sunset. As you can see from the onboard video, we had another malfunction. A review of the onboard video revealed the cause of the problem. The rocket apparently sprung an air leak just before launch. The escaping air apparently overpressurized the barometric sensor in the parachute altimeter causing an error condition. Just prior to launch, we can hear the air rushing and the altimeter beginning to emit an error code, which you can hear later in the flight. This failure happened a mere few seconds before launch, so we didn't have time to notice it before firing the rocket. From the ground, the flight looked like this. The camera operator was able to track the glider quite well for most of the flight. The warped wings of the glider seemed to cause it to perform a lot of barrel rolls. Eventually, the glider began to fly nearly directly in front of the sun, which made it almost impossible to see and track. Then a close encounter with a bee distracted the camera operator, who temporarily lost sight of the glider. When reviewing the video, you can actually see the camera operator caught the moment the glider touched down. With the rocket again destroyed, one completely successful flight, and two other successful glider release tests of the experimental flight software, we decided the experiment was a success, and we should move on to the secret long-term projects. We were very happy with the results of this experiment, and that we were able to learn from the initial failures and make corrections. That's going to do it for this video. If you like this experiment, please smash that like button or leave us a comment below. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, then please subscribe. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.